Okay, let's go back to 1 Samuel 15 then, because that's exactly where we are. We're with the first king. And he was supposed to copy all this down. He was supposed to read the book of Deuteronomy. He was supposed to copy Deuteronomy 25, 17 to 19. And the Am- Amalekites were for him an apt illustration of obedience or disobedience to God. And so what does he do in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 8 and 9? He also took Agag, king of the Am- Amalekites, alive. Now wait a minute, Deuteronomy 25 says that you shall blot out the memory. Verse 3 of 1 Samuel 15 says, Don't spare anyone, man, woman, or child, or animal. But he took Agag alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people, verse 9, spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatling, the lambs, and all that was good. And here's the key. They were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. Do you remember the lesson of this verse? I have it written in my Bible. You probably have it written in yours. If you want to fail and waste your life, then keep and cherish and hold on to and fail to destroy what God hates. Now, specifically... The interpretation of this passage is destroy Amalekites, Amalek, his descendant, Agag. The application to our life is what I read to you this morning in Colossians 3. In verse 5, I'll read it to you again. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead. In other words, execute. Your, your desires for the following, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. Why? Because the Amalekites are an illustration of the sin that remains in our life. That sin is already defeated. Remember, every time Moses held his hands up, they just were wiped out by God. I mean, all Saul had to do is just go out there. He could have gone out there just... just with whoever and God would have destroyed the Amalekites all he had to do was obey and God was doing this he was blotting out the memory of Amalek God wants us to remember that sin is already utterly defeated but it must be dealt with ruthlessly and hacked to pieces or it will revive and it will come back and bother us well keep going to the end of the 15th chapter I want to show you, uh, starting in verse 32, what the righteous one did. By the way, um, Saul was given this charge, and he didn't obey it, even after he was reminded of it. So in verse 32, Samuel steps in. Saul kept only the best of what God hated. To God, the Amalekites were a toxic waste that had to be dealt with. They were emitting dangerous spiritual radiation that would contaminate everyone that came in contact with them. So when God gave them into Saul's hand, he wasn't even to spare their livestock. Everyone and everything was to be destroyed. But Saul and his men went through that which God hated and saved the best. They sorted the deadly contaminants and kept the prettiest pieces of it. Man, it's such a picture of what we do with our flesh. We just cherish the dearest parts. The rest, we don't want anything to do with our vicious anger or, or you know, deep-seated bitterness and jealousy. But those secret desires, we cherish them. We don't want to get rid of them. I was thinking about this. Uh, do you remember in Gulf War II when uh, Saddam was so quickly overrun, the quick victory we had, and then the looting took place right in its wake? I'll always remember the pictures in the Time magazine of the people who had gone into the atomic facilities and gotten those brightly painted red barrels that had those skull and crossbones on them. Those were such beautiful barrels, and they had hauled them off all over the place to their homes and were using them to put things in like water and other stuff. And those barrels, the Time magazine story showed, had been previously used for radioactive materials, so they were dangerously irradiated and what they found is in the days and weeks and months after the end of the war that these people would come into the clinics with horrible radiation sickness 
because they had taken something that was contaminated into their homes and used them. In a very similar way, just like those who did not understand that they were drinking water or eating food out of something contaminated, in verse 30 uh, of 1 Samuel 15, Saul briefly understood. He said, I've sinned, yet honor me now before the people. And so Samuel turned after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. And Samuel said now in verse 32, Bring Agag, king of the Malachites, here to me. So Agag came to him cautiously. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. In verse 33, this is the attitude we are to have about sin. What Samuel's attitude was. Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel, and here's the picture, hacked Agag in pieces before the Lord. That's the picture that Paul gives to us. It should be our attitude about how we deal with our sinfulness and our flesh that remains, that draws us back away from God. It is a deadly contaminant. Agag came delicately, it says in the King James, to Samuel because he knew he was in trouble. Samuel killed Agag. Now that might be strong medicine for some folks, but God is a God of judgment. And God is going to judge wrong and evil. And that obedience of Samuel expressed the wrath that God has against sin. Now it should, number one, remind us of what Christ has done when we were saved. But number two, it should remind us what God expects our attitude to be about our flesh. Because that's what Amalek portrays. The message that I want to underline in your heart and mind is any part of our old life we spare will come back and slay us and rob us of God's blessing.